Tero Ojanperä, what are intelligent platforms? Intelligent platforms uh, drive on the three ingredients. Uh, they basically leverage network effects. That is, every user makes the platform more valuable. AI-based learning loops, so the AI helps to learn faster than the incumbents. And active use of human insight to expand into new areas. You never limit yourself into your current business, but continuously look to expand into new areas. Hi, and welcome to Inference, an AI business podcast by Silo AI. I'm Ville Holko, co-founder of Silo, and with me today is another co-founder of Silo, Tero Ojanperä. Tero is the board chair of Silo, the former chief technology officer of Nokia, a board member of some of the largest banks and telecommunications companies in the Nordics, and, as for our topic today, the co-author of the upcoming book, Platform Strategy. Tero, good to have you with us on Inference. Welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. So Tero, you and Professor Timo Vuori have spent a considerable amount of time in researching the emergence of intelligent platforms as a part of commercial transformation. Could you walk us through what makes up an intelligent platform? What features do they have? So there are basically uh, three uh, uh, winning traits of the intelligent platforms. If you think about Tesla as, a, as an intelligent platform, you start with the network effect that if I buy a Tesla and start driving and I bought one, I love my Tesla. So immediately you are contributing to the other users because if I'm driving in Lapland and in the snow, my driving will be used to teach the AI self-driving software. That is, it makes the software better for other users as well. So every user contributes to the platform development, creates value for the other users. That is called network effect. Of course, Facebook has, has implemented the network effect. Uber has implemented the network and a number of other companies. Uh, then the second ingredient is the AI-based learning loop. So basically, intelligent platforms leverage AI to learn faster than the incumbents. They are constantly looking for new data to learn, and AI, of course, enables that one. Then a third one is really interesting one that uh, if you think about Amazon as an intelligent platform, it started from the books, then it went to the e-commerce. It then realized that it has built the, one of the most powerful infrastructure in the world that is called cloud nowadays, and they created the cloud business. Then they realized that in developing the cloud business, they have created some great capabilities, AI, and that resulted into the Alexa, the conversational AI platform that became kind of a platform in itself. And just when we thought about that, uh, everything is going online, Amazon surprised all of us and went to and bought Whole Foods, a brick and mortar grocery store. But it, it wasn't the traditional expansion of a business where you expand your portfolio but they actually bought it because they could leverage their loyalty and logistics capabilities in that business. So intelligent platforms are constantly looking for new areas to expand their platform and in this way, conquering uh, new sectors. And those are the three elements that uh, create uh, intelligent platforms. So you would think about that uh, it's only for the big and mighty that is the intelligent platforms, but actually we are seeing more and more of the traditional companies adopting these winning trades, network effect, AI-based learning loop, and expanding into new areas. Take an example of Tetra Pak. We all know Tetra Packs. Those are the, you are drinking your morning juice or milk from Tetra Pak, but Tetra Pak provides factories for food and beverage industry. They have 5,000 factories around the world. Those factories need spare parts. That is, something breaks down, that spare part needs to be delivered. And those are supplied by Tetra Pak, but also from third-party spare parts providers. So Tetra Pak created the marketplace, B2B marketplace, where they connect these different suppliers of spare parts to the clients that need them. So they consolidated the demand and supply with this B2B marketplace. They also added their third-party service personnel so that their clients can utilize service personnel around the world. So when you think about this through an intelligent platform lens, you can see that the first, there is a network effect. 
every spare part provider and new service company will add to the attractiveness and the company makes it more valuable. Every new factor will create more demand for these services. Then you have the AI-based learning loop in a way that uh, now Tetrapack can see the data of all the providers that they have in the platform. So they can create insights, what are the parts that broke the mo most often, build the predictive maintenance, and in this way be more uh, proactive in serving their customers. And we don't know yet where is Tetrapack heading, but one can definitely say that once you start to understand better what, what products are needed, what spare parts are needed, how are they being served, you can expand your uh, service capabilities beyond what you have today. So you have a very traditional B2B company digitizing their business, creating an AI best learning loop, and thus uh, moving forward from their current business model into new areas. Um, I suppose a Finnish example could be KNL Technologies. So at sea, a vessel's data connectivity is dependent on satellites. And if there are no satellites nearby, then there is no connectivity. So what KNL did is build this kind of a global mesh network by installing radios on ships that were both transmitters and in essence relays that created the network that all of the users were enjoying. So basically they benefit from a network effect as every ship is both a user and a relay for the network. They benefit from data and algorithmics as the network is in a constant change. They need to re-optimize the structure and the functionality of it. And as a third, they benefit from the creative insights as this kind of a new kind of connectivity. You can build services on top of that, like apps and app stores and different service components inside. Uh, but I'd love to ask you a little bit about the motivation inside it. So, you know, it's 2020 and the book Platform Strategies is about to come out. And still, I'd argue that these platforms have existed and you've been a part of it, I'd argue, as some of the largest platforms in history. Uh, when it comes to the development of the telecommunications market. So why in 2021 are we talking about intelligent platforms now? It's a, it's a great question. And uh, I think the key point here is that uh, technology has come to a point that it is possible for any company to think its business through an intelligent platform strategy. That you don't think about the Facebooks and Googles of the world, uh, but it will be the the shop nearby you that can benefit of this. And, and why we wrote this book is because we would like to more companies to take advantage and, and start to use platform strategies to, to use these techniques to expand their business. And very often the question is not about that you don't understand. There are many books, including uh, several under the headline of platform strategy, where people explain that how do these winners work? How does the Airbnb works? How does uh, uh, Google work, etc.? So it's not about understanding, it's about action. How do you actually start to uh, execute these strategies? And we wanted to write a book that would actually give you the recipe that we call seven step of becoming an intelligent platform. How do you execute this uh, platform strategy? What are the key questions that you need to ask yourself? And how do you put this into action? So Tero, one of the key components within intelligence platforms is the creation of an AI-based learning loop. Uh, could you elaborate on this? So, for example, if we think about some of the examples in your book or some of the examples that you've seen in your everyday work with Silo AI, uh, how would this go about in practice? So AI-based learning loop is a very powerful tool because it allows you to learn faster than your competitors do. But... Uh, there are like uh, some key steps that you need to understand to get there. That um, First one is that don't just jump to develop AI like many companies do. They start with uh, maybe a proof of concept for a one simple algorithm, but they never get into a, a large scale production. You need to kind of start from the vision that how the learning will transform your company. Think about, okay, I'll come back to the, my favorite example of Tesla. It's not the electric vehicle company, it's, it's a sort of the intelligent platforms that leverages AI in, in self-driving capabilities, but also beyond that. The second point is that understand what AI can and cannot do. AI cannot solve all of your problems. You need to kind of basically understand the current state of the art and, and, and use that and not to leverage AI to tasks that where it doesn't excel. 
then identify the key processes and then start the development and create the first implementation of your AI-based learning loop. But once you have done, you are not done. You actually need to come back to your business goals and create the learning loop. What did you learn from the previous exercise? How can you expand it from there? And in this way, create this uh, virtuous circle where you're all the time improving your operations. Think about, for example, this Orica, which is more than 100-year-old Australian company that provides commercial explosives and blasting systems. They actually digitized their operations and created the machine learning uh, system that helps their customers to create blasts that when you need to explode rocks, uh, it advises what type of explosives you need to put, how do you need to place them on the site, and in this way helps to create the right type of the setting. And every blast will actually create data that will help the next blast to be executed in a better way. So every client creates value for the other clients too. So it's a great example of this, that you have the network effect. The more blasts you do, the better you become. You have the AI learning loop and you have digitized your blast engineer's mind in a way. You, you have taught the machine the capabilities and the skills that the, the blast engineer have. But at the same time, for very difficult blasts, the engineer is still needed. So you have the human in the loop. They will check the AI's uh, proposal, add maybe uh, some things there, correct it. And in this way, it's about human and machine working side by side. And it makes sense, right? Because if you think about the fact that in platform strategy, you're putting the network effect before machine learning and before the learning loop, you're essentially getting back to the very fundamentals of what it means to build successful machine learning in core operations, which means is that you need to have the core business existing before the machine learning component does. And this is kind of the fundamental problem with AI first strategies is that it's indeed very difficult to predict in advance where machine learning will thrive and where it will be successful and where essentially it's an interesting exercise but didn't end up delivering actual value. So basically in this case, what you're saying is go forth, build a robust business first, but then scale it up, then scale the performance using machine learning, but don't go AI first. So the key point here is that don't go only AI first, that it's you don't just think about that AI will be the magic uh, bullet that will uh, help you to do everything. You need to think about your business goals and the AI side by side together. And uh, of course, there are companies that you could say that uh, the digital natives, we call them, that they are companies that challenge the incumbents and they drive on building uh, AI from the day one into their systems. But even with them, you don't try to do too much immediately. But especially with the existing businesses, which have all of their legacy, it's even harder uh, that where to get started. And there you need to kind of think about your business goals, like I described the Orica case, that they are providing blasting system for their customers. There was a clear case where to start. That's really interesting. And there are organizations listening that have a business, a clientele, and are kind of now starting to introduce machine learning into the core parts of the offering. So referring back to the seven steps, what would be your recommendations for a team that's looking to transfer into an intelligent platform mindset? So what would be some of the first questions an organization should be asking themselves? One of the key points in looking to successful platform companies is that they all remove friction. They simplify the world. So the, the first question to ask yourself is that uh, are you actually simplifying the world for your customers? And what can you do to actually uh, reduce friction? There are three types of friction in the world, uh, at least. One is that, can you find things? How much effort is going to take you to search things? Are we helping our customers to find and search things faster? The second one is anxiety friction. Uh, you are worried about that, will the taxi arrive in time? If you can see it on the map, and it is being tracked, you are more calm, you, you actually are more relaxed, you know that it's coming, you can see it. And then the third one is that what we call a opportunism cost that when you, for example, took a ride, you might feel that it was too expensive. But if you can see exactly what was the route, and, and what, what were the tariffs, then you know that what you were charged is right. If you think about the world that can you reduce friction, the transaction cost, 
in these three areas and they all require different techniques, then you are already on the right track. But an AI is here a key ingredient that will help you. Because if you think about intelligent matchmaking, if you create a marketplace to people to find things faster and easier, then AI and data is of course helping you there. The better you know your customers and you can match their needs to the supply, the more value you will create. And of course, data and intelligent matchmaking will help you there. Or if you can predict even in advance what they will need, where are they going, etc., that will help you to create more value to your customers. So Tero, you gave a couple of examples. One of them was Tetra Pak, another that was Tesla. Uh, would you be able to walk us through some additional case studies where a company or a larger organization has successfully adopted a intelligent platform strategy? I think one interesting company is uh, TradeLens, that is a joint venture between Maersk and IBM that actually uses a blockchain for logistics. It has digitized the global shipping industry which usually is run by manually, even with pen and paper. And the TradeLens platform allows users to connect and share data. So all parties get the same visibility to the trade, creating transparency. And of course, you can hear uh, apply data and AI in order for this platform to predict the needs of customers in the logistic business better. So I think this is a good example of a platform that creates transparency in the market in a very traditional business, global logistics, uh, and, and in this way, removing friction in an industry that has been quite inefficient for several tens of years. Thinking about some of the silo clientele who would be utilizing an intelligent platform strategy, um, an airline comes to mind. Um, so in kind of the airline's everyday operations, um, this particular company utilizes a dashboard to collect and monitor essentially all aspects of the airline's operations within the airport. So the network effect is as more airports are equipped with the system, the more holistic the overview gets, the more visibility they gain. They benefit from algorithmics as with more data, they can create a better prediction of flight delays and all the other things that are happening within the network of the operations. And they also benefit from creative insights as having a real-time overview, if you will, in a single dashboard enables these new kind of functionalities to be embedded into it. So new skills, new capabilities, new prediction systems, and those data streams essentially can then be shared with the rest of the airport ecosystem. Yeah, it's a, it's a great example and meets the definition of the intelligent platforms or start of an intelligent of platform where, where you start to create a network effect uh, by connecting different parties, by providing this data and using the AI learning loop. I, I think that in a similar manner, because this example is about understanding in real time what is happening and predicting in advance uh, what's going to happen next is like, if you think about this anxiety cost, if you minimize the uncertainty, anxiety cost, it will help your customers. So real-time tracking, taking the data, understanding what's there today, even in a traditional business like restaurants, that uh, if you are delivering a meal with, uh, with Uber Eats or from Bolt, which are great platforms, basically tracking the data, how the meals get prepared, when are they ready for delivery and then uh, tracking the delivery times with uh, AI and data helps you to actually optimize the whole delivery time and communicate that to your customer exactly on a right manner so that they're, they have the peace of mind uh, that they know that if it says that it comes in the 35 minutes to 40 minutes, it, it is about right. And in this way, the customer starts to trust you. So the, one of the characteristics of the intelligent platforms is that the, with data and AI, you create trust into the system that whatever you predict, whatever you say will be true. And it becomes more and more accurate when you go forward. So it's a learning system. So that's the key. So Tero, we are starting to reach the end of the episode of Inference. And as is customary, um, we love to predict the future. So I'd love to get your prediction as well. So you mentioned before in our talk that um, one of the key changes happening in 2021 is democratization and the ease of access into what you would call these intelligent platform services, where previously a platform thinking was reserved to the largest of companies, and now it's becoming more accessible to even some of the market challengers and startups even in shorter amounts of time. 
How do you see the future power shift of this market? So when intelligent platforms are starting to come into play, how do you see the business evolving from this point in the future? So I think that every industry will be touched by intelligent platforms. And uh, whether you are in a B2B business or B2C business, you should think about network effects. How do you create value in a way that every user that you have, every customer that you have, will add also value to the other customers. For example, take a Hilti group that you might not, not know by name, but uh, maybe you know the Hilti nail gun, a, a red nail gun that is used in the construction sites. So Hilti is not actually selling these uh, tools like nail guns and drills. They are leasing them, but they are also tracking every move through RFID tags and AI. And in this way, helping their customers to create the optimal tooling plan. So you don't need to know anything about tooling. You just tell what you are building and they will provide you the tooling plan and the right tools will appear in time. They are also using uh, robots and actually computer vision to track what's happening in the building side, documenting it, but also spotting faults. So maybe in the future, what happens is that the construction person is uh, is on the site and then comes the robot knocking on your shoulder and says that hey maybe there was a mistake here you should you should fix this part and helping the workers to become better in their job of course some of these jobs will be replaced but in some ways i tend to think about that uh, uh, ai intelligent platforms are here to help us to to remove redundant work uh, sort of the routine task and, and helping us to focus on the more value-added tasks. And with that, I would encourage anyone listening to go forth and search out the Platform Strategies book. Tero, do you want to tell us a little bit about the book's release? When is it coming out and where can we get it? So the Platform Strategy book uh, is, is out October 2nd, so you can get it now uh, from your uh, favorite bookstore because it's widely av available around the world. In the US, it will, will be, and Canada, it will be out uh, October 26th. And uh, with the Platform Strategy book, uh, uh, which is uh, helping you to transform your business with AI platforms and human intelligence, it's about really taking the first step. We help, your, uh, help you to understand your current situation and focus on the first value adding step to your clients. So you don't create actually platform overnight you actually need it, build it over a sequence of steps. We have outlined the seven steps that will help you there, starting from the turn your fear into energy, how to remove friction, and how to use AI-based learning loop to accelerate your development as an intelligent platform. So it's all about taking a, a practical, concrete actions and not building great visions. Uh, you need the vision to actually backtrack from there to take the first step. But don't try to build your vision uh, first. Build a simple first step and then you succeed.